What's up, guys? Leopold the Brain. <coughs> wow. I was not ready for this recording. Ugh. What's up, guys? Leopold the Brave here for another episode commentary of Fictional Fights. This is a really fun episode to do because I love both these characters. They're probably both one of my favorites in each of the series. Master Roshi is one of my favorite Dragon Ball characters, and Jiraiya is my favorite Naruto character besides Sasuke and Gaara. But I think it goes Sasuke, Jiraiya, Gaara from favorite to least favorite of those top three. And Roshi, my favorite Dragon Ball characters, uh, probably Piccolo to Krillin to Roshi. So, Roshi and... Yeah, you get what I mean. Roshi and Dry are both one of my favorites in each series. Oh yeah, um, for some reason Hira said uncomfortable weird. It was, this episode sure to be uncomfortable and disturbing, but he kept, he kept saying uncomfortable for some, like... Uncomfortable. Un uncomfortable for some reason. Maybe because the voice of Hira is Australian. Maybe un uncomfortable isn't an Australian word. Maybe there's a different word for it. I don't I don't know. I'm not Australian, so I don't know. Uh, but anyways. Roshi vs. Drive. There's really not much to talk about. It was just another episode. Which might explain why I actually didn't do too well. I mean, the ratings were fine. The ratings are perfectly normal and good. Lots of likes and very few dislikes, but it didn't quite get as much views as the previous couple episodes. Like, Scout vs. Tracer got a lot of views in the first 24 hours. Um, Aang vs. Poe got a buttload of views in the first 24 hours. And this didn't even make a thousand in the first 24 hours. So... Maybe it's because I didn't promote it well enough, like the trailer had nothing to do with Roshi or Jiraiya because I couldn't think of a good trailer idea. The last episode, uh, Aang vs. Poe, it still didn't have a good enough trailer for it. I just think it was more because I didn't promote it well. There were also less reactors that watched it also. Yeah, for those who don't know, I support reactions of fictional fights because none of this content is really mine. This is just my research with clips that belong to other people, animations that belong to other people, with music that belongs to other people playing in the background. The only thing that's mine is my voice and my research, so I don't feel I don't feel like anything's being stolen from me when people react to this stuff, so I completely support reactions of fictional fights. It's totally fine. So if the, for those of you who see reactions and think that they're stealing content from me, don't get onto them or anything because they're not stealing anything. Because I I barely own any part of fictional fights besides the research and my smooth, milky voice. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about the actual research. Alright, see the Frieza soldiers there? I was already worried that people were going to be like, well, Roshi beat Frieza's soldiers, he should be able to beat Jiraiya. Frieza's soldiers there have no strength feats. Like, if you've seen uh, Resurrection F or Dragon Ball Super, those Frieza soldiers aren't even strong enough to hold Piccolo's weighted clothing. So, they literally have zero strength feats to scale Roshi to. If, I mean, I get Piccolo's weighted clothing is probably super duper heavy, but these are Frieza soldiers we're talking about. They work for Frieza, and they can't lift it. So, yeah, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear that they aren't smart or very strong. Plus, Roshi doesn't quite have the experience of the other Z fighters. Yeah, he's like centuries old, but he's pretty much out of practice. I mean, he didn't train on Korin's tower to fight Nappa in the Saiyan saga. I mean, yeah, he's been on Korin's tower before, but not in Dragon Ball Z to keep up with the other guys. I don't think he fought in the Cell games, did he? Nope. He didn't go to Planet Namek to fight Frieza. Nope. So yeah, Roshi's like way out of practice compared to the other Z fighters. Now if it were like Krillin or uh, Piccolo versus Jiraiya, it probably would have been a different story. Because they're faster than Roshi, they're more trained and stuff. But nope, if it's Roshi versus Jiraiya, Jiraiya's definitely got this because of his speed and hacks. Alright, so Roshi's moon feet too. Let's talk about that. The moon feet is a big fat outlier. Me along with many other versus debaters think so. So don't worry, it's not just me cherry picking 
Roshi's feats. Lots of versus debaters agree, because characters characters in Dragon Ball Z have not shown moon level feats until the Saiyan saga of Dragon Ball Z. If Roshi was really moon level at that time, then he would have been able to beat Raditz in the Saiyan saga with no problem. He wouldn't have even needed Goku or Piccolo to do it. He could have just beaten Raditz and given Gohan back to Goku. <laughs> So yeah, Roshi is not moon level, for anyone wondering. Uh, and besides, like I said before, the strength doesn't matter because Jiraiya is like hundreds of times faster than Roshi. And he has hacks that Roshi has no way of avoiding, like turning him into a frog. I mean, we all know from Dragon Ball Z that getting turned into a frog is terrible. Captain Ginyu, anyone? <laughs> ribbit, ribbit. Oh, that was... That was a surprise when he came back in Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Anyways, now on to Jiraiya. Uh, so... Uh, um, when it comes to Naruto, I've seen all of the original series, and I've been watching through Shippuden, and I... I got to the part where Jiraiya dies, and I was devastated. <laughs> Spoilers, people. But come on, it's like years old, so you should know by now. But yeah, Jiraiya dies when he when he's fighting against pain, and it's super duper sad. Yeah, I'm currently watching Naruto Shippuden for research over Jin vs. Sasuke, because previously I had only seen all of the original Naruto series, and I've only read parts of Shippuden, like the manga, but I had never actually seen like the full thing or read the full thing. Like, I read all the way up to right before <laughs> Jiraiya died, so it's kind of funny that I stopped right before one of my favorite character's deaths. But then I went to watching the anime, and now I'm at Itachi's story, so I'm pretty much nearly done with the anime, then I'm gonna have to go back to the manga because the manga is farther along than the anime. But I'm at Itachi's story in like the most recent season, so I've, I've been catching up pretty fast. I'm almost there. Research for Jin vs. Sasuke is almost done. I mean, I obviously ha already have everything for Jin, but... Naruto is just so big. So, <laughs> I've got lots of stuff to cover there. So yeah, Roshi vs. Jiraiya. One thing I want to mention is like that writing at the beginning about Tsunade's boobs. I, I had written for that to be as awkward and uncomfortable as possible. Oh, sorry. Uncomfortable as possible. And luckily, here as delivery was perfect for that. Just the mumbling and slow talking. It was amazing. It was like just perfect for that unease, cringy uncomfortableness. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and another thing I got wrong here. I did get something wrong here, like something super duper wrong. Uh, the Rasengan is not a wind release technique. I was thinking of Naruto's Rasen Shuriken, which is like a wind variation of the Rasengan. I, it was on my mind when I was writing the script, and I was like, huh, I'm gonna make a joke about Aang and elements, lol. And it just made me completely forget that Rasengan is not a wind release jutsu, it's just a normal chakra jutsu. And the guy behind, uh, uh, oh, I forget his name. I mean, I didn't forget his name, I know what it is, I just don't ha know how to pronounce it. It's like... DJ Tiki or something? Hold on, let me look at it, because I if he watches this commentary, he's gonna make fun of me for it. <laughs> it's it's time. Yes, it's it's, it's DJ Tiki. It's DJ Tiki. G not G DJ Tiki, it's DJ Tiki. Like Tiki mask or something. DJ Tiki. Whoops. I knew his name. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. I knew there was a D and a T and a K and a J and I's and whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, he got on to me about getting the Rasengan's uh, chakra nature wrong. <laughs> oh, and this is the beautiful animation by Alex303. All the voice clips here were me just making random noises. Because RPGs do that sometimes. And I thought it would be a way to make just them standing around giving dialogue more interesting. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and there's the nice little reference to Cartoon Fight Club that Alex303 put in. I didn't ask him to do this, this was all him, so if you thought that reference was cool, just thank him. <laughs> Alright, and in the comments section of the original episode, see this, see this is Cynthia, and she had voice clips, she had like a little giggle and then a small little hum. 
voice clip, and I put in the comments of the original episode that whoever can guess where the sound clips are from gets a free shout out. But nobody got it. Then again, they only had two days to guess, but the answer, the voice clips, were from Tiffany May from Honey Pop. <laughs> so yeah, that's what they were from. That little giggle and then the little hum. It was Tiffany from Honey Pop. Love me some Honey Pop. I mean, who doesn't love Honey Pop? I Aiko is my girl. So is Tiffany. They're both my girl. Ah, uh, yes, and there's the Kamehameha fake out. Uh, and here comes the frog. This is. I like. You see, I've been playing GTA 5 a lot recently. So. I just had to include that wasted Easter egg. And actually. I was figuring maybe I could make it a, a series staple for fictional fights. Like, whenever a character dies, it just does the wasted thing. Because, you know, normally versus shows have the KO, like just the announcer and whatever, and the text appears on screen. But I really like GTA 5 from what I'm playing so far. I got it earlier this week because I got a PS4 not too long ago, like maybe two weeks ago. I've been playing No Man's Sky, but that got boring really fast, so I'm playing GTA 5 now, and I'm really enjoying it a lot, so I wanted to include some kind of Easter egg to it. And actually, a quick secret to anyone who actually listens to the commentaries, I'm actually really enjoying the GTA 5 story so much that I might want to do a GTA 5 free-for-all battle royale episode between Michael, Franklin, and Trevor to see who's the ultimate criminal or whatever. So th I feel like that'd be really fun to do if I can figure out how to work Rockstar Editor and get figure out how just basically just how to get fight scenes to work because I know there's like a clip or video editor in it somewhere somehow. I just have to figure out how to work or get good with it. Oh yeah, and in the original script, I mentioned the moon thing, but then I cut it out because I figured people might fuss about me cherry-picking feats and stuff. They might accuse me of purposefully nerfing Roshi just by stating how I feel the moon feat is an outlier, so I just left it out completely. But people got more upset about me leaving it out than mentioning it at all, even though the only reason I'd ever mention it is to point out that it is an outlier. <laughs> so... I just can't win. <laughs> That's one thing about versus debating. With some people, you just can't win. But wow, I actually made it to the end of the episode with the commentary. Woo, that's a first, I think. So yeah, Zim versus Karo. My Karo voice was a little off in the in the uh, trailer. Kiro, Kiro, Kiro. But hopefully this time it'll be better. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Todd Abercorn as a voice actor. I can do a good Todd... I can do voices of Todd Abercorn characters like Death the Kid and Kararo. I was just having an off day during that for some reason. <clears throat> but I can do much better ones if I, like, prepare for it. I think I actually auditioned for Death the Kid in an abridged series, but it got cancelled and never went anywhere, even though I got the part. So yeah, that was the end. Goodbye!